Uh, so, uh, I'm going to go through a few things I've been uh, working on uh, in Drupal.org in the last uh, six, eight months, uh, and uh, along with the Drupal Association engineering team. Uh, uh, I'm Neil Drum, I'm lead architect uh, on Drupal.org, and um, we have, uh, right now our infrastructure is mostly virtualized, so uh, we're using hardware in a data center in Corvallis, Oregon, at Oregon State, and um, yeah, we've gone through, uh, you know, we still have the hardware, it's useful, but it's all virtualized now, so we can move things around a bit, bit easier, but it's still a big stack of infrastructure and uh, something like eight Drupal sites. Um, go ahead and interrupt me anytime for questions. I don't, I don't think we have any issues with, with time or anything here. Uh, so, uh, one thing I think uh, people uh, that you might have noticed is uh, we have longer issue URLs, but they're more friendly. Um, the thing that people probably don't know is they have a couple shortcuts to get to those faster. So if you're a sprint or something, and you're like shouting seven digit numbers uh, across the table, uh, it's actually a little bit better chance for people to uh, uh, catch those and put them in somewhere. Cause you put them right in the search field and they'll go to that issue. Um, and uh, you know the old URLs still work uh, slash node slash node ID, uh, but you could also shorten it to uh, slash i slash node ID. Um, so you're just generating a lot of uh, The slash i is uh, it's a menu callback that does a Drupal go to, uh, and the search one. I think that's what did I do on there? It's probably the form submit or validate uh, uh, altered in uh, to catch that. Uh, it works for all nodes if you have interest in anything that's not an issue. Uh, there wasn't any reason to not make that work. So uh, those work. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind if you're at Sprint or uh, tomorrow or you know, any time. Uh, uh, if you, uh, you sit around the office maybe uh, also, uh, in the issue queue, pretty recently, uh, you know, we have Drupal has these issue tags uh, that sometimes they're, you know, needs framework manager review, like who is a framework manager, um, and stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, admins, I think, uh, I don't know the role offhand that can edit the issue tag descriptions, but. Uh, yeah, there's a few admins who can actually describe what these issues, uh, issue tags are and um, should help with uh, getting issues solved and figuring out what the next step is on a certain issue. Uh, you know, give links off to more stuff. And yeah, that appeared, I think, a couple weeks ago, and I finally uh, backfilled all of the descri descriptions I could find uh, last week. So pretty new. Uh, for the uh, core maintainers, uh, especially, uh, there's an extra way of sorting the issue queue now. Uh, I shouldn't have cropped the headers off this, but it's basically uh, the there's a column next to last uh, last time the issue was updated that. Uh, it's last time the issue status was updated. So if you're looking at a view of the issues filtered by you know, RTBC or any status, you can see how long has it been in that status. Uh, so situations like this, uh, this issue in the middle is updated uh, a day before I took the screenshot, uh, but it, it doesn't get out, um, out of order. So a little bit more f uh, fair, uh, you know, fair waiting periods for core issues uh, review. Uh, you know, they don't necessarily do everything in order, but um, for the set of issues that do go in order, that's uh, a little bit better. Uh, it turns out most of the time they're, uh, the dates are about the same, but there, there are these cases, especially the uh, 
issues everyone's running into. Those get updated a lot. I did quite a bit of work on the uh, kind of lower half of the project pages, the uh, download. Uh, there used to be tables, uh, but now it's have a bit more information here, so you can at a glance kind of see like everything screen and uh, and more kind of call out uh, things that you might want to be looking for. Um, you know, how many sites re report using the module? That was a little bit more varied before. Uh, now you can see that in the downloads right next to each other. Uh, the security advisory policy information that was probably added a little bit more than, what, like a year ago? A year and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, reminding people that uh, uh, tagged uh, non-beta, non-alpha releases, those are the ones covered by security policy. Uh, and um, there's other rules that you know modules can opt in or out for the whole process. Uh, so uh, kind of summarizing it, like, yes, this is, uh, if there's a security issue reported to the security team, uh, yes, it will be handled in a coordinated release on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. And yeah, my other, my other thought, uh, you know, when I was building this was kind of making more surface area for uh, information you might want to know about a uh, release, like is it passing tests, uh, is it uh, put the dev release next to the um, uh, tagged release that it goes with. In the future we could do more stuff like, uh, you know, how many commits ahead is the development version. Um, right now you can compare the dates. if. Um, but yeah, there's more s space to kind of add more stuff. Um, we'll have to make it, kind of keep in mind uh, how readable it is. It's already kind of looking like a pile of information, but uh, we have a place to put that now. Uh, starring projects uh, works kind of uh, pretty much like you see on GitHub or GitLab. Um, just a way to keep track of uh, modules uh, or any project. Um, I don't think there's enough kind of volume of people starting stuff to like make a leaderboard of who has the most stars or what's trending, but we could do that if people are interested. Um, so yeah, they're there. And uh, some big changes. I think the project creation process that changed about a year ago, or a little bit less than a year ago. Uh, but everyone can make full projects now. Uh, there's no waiting for the community uh, review process. Which, uh, in the past, uh, if you wanted, if you were a new developer to Drupal.org and you went to hit the ground running and uh, put a module on Drupal.org. Uh, to have releases for that and to have it in place people could download it and use it. You had to go through this uh, um, issue queue, this community review for the project. Like, you know, does it follow coding standards? Does it follow security standards? Uh, but it turned out that, you know, the review process is pretty complex and volunteers, uh, you know, it wasn't something volunteers uh, were getting through pretty uh, that queue very efficiently. Uh, so now anyone can make full projects, can create releases right away. Uh, we did uh, introduce a uh, concept of a module can opt in or out of security advisory coverage. So a new project, a new developer, they won't be able to uh, say, yes, this will be covered by uh, security advisories um, until uh, they still have to go through that uh, old queue. But we're looking at ways of uh, looking at ways of uh, fixing that process. Uh, you know, maybe uh, probably a quiz to uh, kind of 
certify that you can uh, put a basic module uh, or theme up on Drupal.org. Is there like automation about it? So the standards or? Uh, so yeah, the quiz uh, that Michael, uh, who's presenting in the next room, uh, is uh, drafting. It covers, I think, three general areas. Let's see if I can remember. Uh, basic uh, you know, policies on Drupal.org. You know, do you know that you're submitting, uh, you know, code on Drupal.org is GPL version two or later? Uh, other policies on uh, about. Um, you know, what your responsibilities are um, for posting the code. Uh, coding standards, knowledge, you know, do you, can you uh, spot SQL injection and not do that? Um, and there is a standard, I believe he's wanting to do a uh, code a example theme or module uh, that's kind of to our specs, everyone's doing the same work, uh, but something that can be reviewed, uh, automated. Uh, and I'll get to, in a few slides, we're running uh, um, one of the things we might want to add to the project pages is um, we are doing coding standards checks for everything that runs tests now. Uh, so that's another thing that we could uh, show on the project page. Um, so, you know, coding standards, it, uh, a lot of it is like, you know, are doing the white space correctly, uh, small, small, small stuff like that, but still kind of an indi indication of how much a developer is paying attention to the small things and um, coding standards checks for using APIs uh, can get into uh, finding uh, potential security issues. Like it's relatively possible to do static analysis and find SQL injection uh, potential. Um, so you can look at what goes into a database call, and at least the blatant ones, computer could definitely spot those. Spots really blatant ones, but anything subtle is hard. Yep. Uh, but yeah, Drupal has. Yeah, a lot of security is used the APIs, and um, you have to think less about security. Uh, so yeah, into some Drupal CI stuff. Uh, we have uh, branch labels for core, so uh, you know Drupal eight development's moving um, at a good st steady pace. The you know eight five x eight six x every six months we get another uh, series of uh, minor releases. Um, so we introduced the uh, core branch labels. So you can set up testing for your project and it'll just follow along. Uh, you know, you prob uh, you know, core developers, they want to see people use development. Uh, so they're also testing the latest core as, as well as um, the latest code in your module. Uh, but you could also uh, set up testing for uh, the uh, either the next release that's upcoming uh, or um, you know what everyone's kind of everyone's using right now so yeah right now we're in we're in the two uh, two months out the six month release cycle where uh, you know eight four eight five and eight six are getting are they all getting commits right now or is eight four I guess eight four is mostly uh, like only serious bug fixes yeah probably uh, if, if anything, but it's what everyone's using. So, as a module developer, you uh, there's a good chance you're still testing against it uh, because it's what's uh, what's on everyone's site. Uh, the options at the bottom, you can peg it to a certain release, but we're uh, we're going to get rid of those uh, probably sometime in the next six months. Uh, 
And this is something that uh, will probably, uh, in the future, make it out to other places on Drupal.org, like the core issue queue itself, uh, have this issue targeted against a uh, development branch or you know, it's a backport to the, uh, uh, the supported branch. Uh, so less kind of chasing issues, uh, it, uh, version numbers of uh, Drupal core as you uh, get your issue uh, solved. Uh, and we have, uh, yeah, Drupal CI, I think for a little over a year, it's been doing uh, coding standards checks uh, you know, these are things that you know, we shouldn't uh, be spending, uh, you know, humans uh, spotting things. So, like this, this has three coding standards errors. Like, can I can you spot one? Um, the caches nested up. Yep. Standards would have it on the next line. <laughs> They're all white space errors. Yeah, two space, I see two, two space indentations. And there's a four and two. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's actually space in the array with a message. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, it's better if a robot <laughs> just tells us. Uh, yeah. Poor Peter. So, yeah, it calls out that uh, this was the result from a patch, of course. Uh, it calls out that you know there's coding standards problems in the branch itself. So, if you're really looking at the branch test, you see everything. Uh, the way it works for patches is it tests the uh, the files that you modified. It still tests the whole files. Um, so we have this uh, kind of diff here of you know, so it's three more than were on the branch. So there's probably uh, in this case it was uh, pretty straightforward since the branch was clean for that file. Uh, so does that cause a fail on this? Not right now. Uh, yeah, I think there's issues open about like what should we do with this information? Because uh, yeah, core does have uh, coding standards errors in the main test result now. So if we failed it, it would uh, yeah, we figure out the rules for that. And it's we want something that works for a contrib too. Um, and uh, for contrib, there are. Uh, like dot files that you can use to modify what coding standards you want to comply to. So uh, the way Core is doing it is phasing in like, okay, we're good at two-space two indentation, we're good at array indentation, those are turned on, but um, the, you know, they're turning on things, you know, a group at a time um, as, uh, as things get fixed, so it's not just a flood of we need to fix everything, but you know that would break up the other patch. Drop <laughs> uh, script testing uh, that's been surprisingly uh, hard. Uh, we put in Phantom JS support. Uh, turns out Phantom JS is end of life and not supported, and wasn't really supported at the time we were trying to get it added. Uh, that's there. It's the cause of some random failures in core testing right now. Uh, but just uh, in the last few weeks, uh, WebDriver and Threadless Chrome uh, is available on Drupal CI to replace that. Uh, so the blocker is a, um, a core issue to set up some of the infrastructure for, uh, in the, on the core side uh, for that, and then can. Uh, migrate the uh, how many drop script tests we have 20 or 30 I think uh, so yeah so it'd be a great core issue to work on uh, that's the blocker for um, uh, WebDriver and Headless Chrome tests right now 
Um, let's see. And a lot of the Drupal CI improvements have been uh, under the hood sort of things. Um, AWS introduced per second billing, was it October, November ish time? Uh, so we used to have a bunch of rules around um, Drupal CI. Um, you know, we would say uh, if, a, if a test bot had been up for, uh, you know, if, if a test bot is idle, keep it idle until the top of the hour, uh, or keep, keep it around until the top of the hour in case another test comes in and starts using it. Uh, and then shut it down if it's still idle at like you know five till the end of the hour that it's been up. Uh, but yeah, all of that logic was just you know you were wasting time, uh, wasting money while test bots were idle and had all this extra logic. So now we can say you know keep it around for a couple minutes, you know maybe let a test uh, pick it up if one's ready to uh, start using it immediately. Otherwise, just uh, get rid of it, save the money, uh, and then that means each test is about the same price. Um, we don't need to, you know, have a, it used to be a limit of tw uh, 15 to 20 instances. Uh, so we took away that limit because it's going to be the same price all the time. So that should be less time for patches to queue because we'll pretty much always spin up a new test bot right away and you'll get your test results faster. Um, and yeah, there's been other uh, under the improvements that my coworker Ryan's been doing, like templating out the uh, all the configuration. So uh, he added support for uh, PHP 7, uh, seven something like seven. Are we up to seven five or seven four? Anyway, adding a new version of PHP for testing in Drupal CI is like a one character change now instead of uh, go through a bunch of template files and copy and paste. And uh, in general, we've been working with uh, Tag One on site reliability. Uh, they came on as our infrastructure uh, support partner, I believe. January or February last year, maybe it was a little later, like March, uh, and they've been concentrating on monitoring, alerting, uh, server upgrades, uh, and yeah, you probably don't see much of it, but that's why, uh, why the site's uh, been running. Um, if not better, at least we know when it's not running <laughs> running properly. Uh, something fun we've been uh, tr experimenting with uh, experimenting with in the last uh, couple weeks is a product called Primitor X. Uh, so, uh, you know, Drupal.org is funded by Fastly. Uh, we have two chances to hit a cache on the way to our servers, uh, but we still uh, get spikes of traffic where we get double uh, the, th you know, the, the throughput at the bottom. That's double the traffic for about uh, 10 minutes uh, that got to our servers. And what that does to the uh, requests uh, gets up to five or six seconds, that's too, on average, that's too short, uh, taking too long to deliver a page, and uh, yeah, it doesn't look good in the New Relic AppDex score. Uh, so this is kind of the, this and deployments are the main causes of uh, downtime or site degradation right now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what Perimeter X looks like is uh, right now we, it's only a JavaScript uh, embed that they're uh, testing uh, or using. Um, what they'll do 
when we fully deploy it is uh, they have uh, code that goes into the VCL uh, for Fastly and um, then their dashboard will be collecting uh, all the traffic go that goes through Fastly um, and doing analysis on that. Uh, but they do some things like uh, categorize like what's uh, you know, what's a, one of the known bots, Google bots, something like that. Um, and, and then, you know, it'll also look at, um, you know, what's browser spoof, spoofing and um, other types of uh, bad bot activity that they know about. Uh, and, yeah, there's a few more. I hid a few of the things on here, so there's no IP addresses. But um, yeah, we can see uh, we haven't tuned this. So um, Drupal.org has a concept of confirmed users, um, and we know that they're not spammers and are probably good to have on the site. So it is catching uh, a few false positives of uh, these are requests that things are bad from people that we've confirmed. I mean, we turn on as we turn on enforcement of this and like start blocking people uh, uh, we'll make sure that uh, confirmed users aren't, aren't blocked and figure out why they're catching that um, let's see if it loads here. so this is everyone there's um, so how does it block people it's IP based so uh, it uh, so the way it blocks is uh, through the uh, VCL code that they'll give us. Uh, that that's what actually does the blocking. So the blocking happens in Fastly before it gets to our servers, and I believe it's a concept of IP address, and they have a cookie that they're looking for, um, and. Uh, yeah, I haven't gotten, I haven't read the VCL code myself, uh, but yeah, there's a, a lot of, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, kind of rules and let's see, uh, volume based rules. Honestly, the volume based rules, that's uh, what will, uh, That'll solve a lot of the uh, uh, floods of uh, requests. A lot of them, uh, you know, unless someone's actually trying to hack the site, there. A lot of these floods of requests. Uh, when we see something like uh, like this, it's uh, people trying to scrape data from the website or scrape data, uh, grab data from the API. Like they're not. Most of the things aren't actual attacks. They're developers trying something and just trying something with a lot of threads. <laughs> uh, so most of these aren't real, aren't malicious, but they do have a real impact on it, uh, our traffic. So yeah, just be able to uh, you know set these uh, limits um, for. Um, you know, how many pages is it? would a human recently request or an API client recently request uh, in any time period. Um, and yeah, the other stuff, the, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of these uh, kind of false positives confirmed users uh, thinks they're doing browser spoofing. That's, well, that's happens for web developers. Uh, some people are still, uh, or you know, sometimes you have to set your uh, your user agent to something else and forget that it's set that way, and you end up browser spoofing, uh, having that left turned on. So, yeah, I'm I'm happy about this because this is uh, these traffic spikes are the main reason that I get paged it. 3 a.m. 
Uh, and yeah, there's only two of us in the Patreon rotation, so it's a week on, week off situation. Um, it's not too bad, but sometimes there's uh, actually Drupal Camp NJ uh, last year. Uh, we had a, one of the usually when this happens, it's from one IP address. Uh, that was like one of the few times we had a real distributed denial service style attack. I don't remember if it was. Uh, uh, I don't remember how malicious it was. It probably was, but I mean, there's other stuff like uh, SEO websites that are scanning the internet, and we see a bunch of traffic from them. Um, Is it, who's the CDN? What's the CDN uh, Fastly. Yeah, we're pretty. We're happy with Fastly. Um, yeah, we get to write. Uh, you know, they're varnish as a service, uh, so we write the, uh, uh, we can have any VCL code we want, that's how Primary Access is working, it's a bunch of VCL code. Do they offer any kind of WAF or? Uh, they do, uh, we don't have that turned on, uh, that would be extra. Uh, it's a relatively new service for them. I think they I think Fastly introduced it in the last six months. Um, but you care about it, what do you want it? Um, yeah, I think uh, if it's something it would uh, offer us, uh, you know, as the Drupal Association, we're negotiating uh, with uh, all of these companies uh, to get Nonprofit open source rates uh, and you know, get into our uh, partnership programs. Uh, so yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't know if we've no tried negotiating around the WAP uh, stuff. I don't know how much it costs, yeah. but and there's not a lot of those rules that are usually useful for people. Yeah, I mean it's still useful for uh, you know. Uh, of the malicious ones, you know, sometimes people are looking for WordPress vulnerabilities. Right. It'd be nice to drop that traffic rather than right. yeah. process it. Um, yeah, yeah. WAPs, they're useful, they do what they do. They're not gonna prevent a sophisticated security attack, but it's a good filter. So you said with Perimeter X, is it like active enforcement or do you have to manually move it, the VCL? Into so that's what we're doing right now. We're I doing see. manual. So you're it, mediating it before you. Well, yeah, we have fully turned on Perimeter X. What we're doing right now, uh, what we're doing, like you know, mitigating the uh, you know flood of traffic we had last year. We were finding IP addresses, putting the VCL manually. Um, you, uh, well, to find the IP address, we're like grabbing and setting through the logs, and it's just it's not what you want to be doing after a page because it takes you know, five minutes minimum to figure out what's going on. Perimeter X, it's all automatic and we can go into the, uh, let's see, yeah, you know, we can go into the dashboard and uh, I don't know if there's a, Yeah, I, there, there's somewhere in here that we'll be able to uh, have all the IP specific stuff uh, closed up. I guess we'll see a couple of them if this loads. Their dashboard is very kind of startup-y. They just like found a bunch of React stuff and tossed it together. <laughs> uh, So, yeah, we can take a, yeah, we're seeing like, you know, this person's confirmed a lot of volume exceeded, we could add that add them to a white, white list. So we can go in and manually mess with it, but what it's doing is assigning a score to everything and we'll set something probably, uh, you know, we'll probably start with 100 only if it's totally certain that uh, something is a 
it's bad, uh, we'll have it blocked and then kind of ease it in. Uh, cause, you know, we'll probably uh, be able to get by without too much um, blocking. Because uh, it's really just the spikes of traffic is what we care about. We've had challenges with that with um, VPNs. Like a lot of our people use VPNs. And so mm -hmm. they, those usually have a bunch of shared IPs. And I could see that really scaling up here and being kind of problematic. Yeah. Yeah. And there's sometimes whole countries are coming from the same IP address. Right. So. Uh, Yeah, it's definitely, we'll want to be careful with uh, deploying it, but uh, yeah, it should kind of help out with the, um, uh, yeah, the pages we get at random times. The other pages are because we're deploying something and we know it's happening. <laughs> uh, so the kind of big discussion lately is developer tools. Uh, you know, how, how people are working on, on Drupal.org to build Drupal and Drupal modules and themes. Uh, you know, we have this old Git infrastructure, it's kind of home, homemade, we have this uh, issue queue that no one else, uh, no other big projects use. Uh, and, you know, probably for the last, you know, five, 10 years people have been asking like, well, why don't we replace this? Uh, so, you know, we want to uh, kind of start by by taking a step back and like figure out what the goals are. Uh, so you know, if we start with, you know, why don't you use, why don't you use GitHub? That's, that's too, <laughs> too quick. Um, so, uh, the, you know, we want new developers to kind of hit the ground running uh, and have tools they, they can work with. Um, you know, patches, they're about the same complexity to learn as, uh, you know, Git. Git's not simple in command, but people know it. Um, we want to keep uh, Drupal's collaborative workflow. It's more common in Drupal than open, other open source projects to uh, have multiple people working on an issue, writing code for an issue. Um, it's a lot of handoffs from person to person that happen where, uh, you know, on smaller projects, it's more, you know, there's fewer uh, developers and it's pretty normal for uh, you know, one person to, uh, you know, take a, you know, file an issue and uh, take that through pull uh, pull request uh, to until uh, it gets committed. We keep our contribution credit system. Um, we, you know, Drupal's uh, targeting itself for ambitious websites. That means more people are doing Drupal as their day job than hobbyists. And the uh, companies, uh, besides you know having software that works for them, they want. Uh, want some credit for that. Uh, uh, keep in mind maintain, maintainability for us. Um, you know, right now we have a system that you know three or five people really know inside and out. And uh, you know, if I win or if I get a new job, a bunch of knowledge goes with me, and that's that's not a good situation. Uh, so we don't want to have more. Of that, uh, and we want to keep uh, Drupal.org as the home of the project. Uh, you know, we have uh, definitely want to keep project pages and browsing uh, on Drupal.org, um, and uh, you know, we see other projects kind of going the opposite direction. WordPress uh, used to be themed. Uh, modules and themes for WordPress were scattered across the internet and uh, they've been kind of trying to centralize those uh, um, lately. Uh, technically, uh, 
merge or pull requests, whatever you call them. Uh, different tools have different names for them. Uh, code review, uh, you know, be able to comment on a line of code. Uh, inline editing, most of these tools have this, this now, so um, uh, you know, it's good for documentation fixes or quick, uh, quick fixes. Uh, so, yeah, why not GitHub? Uh, it's, familiar, it's familiar to a bunch of people, or most developers, um, but really doesn't have that collaborative workflow. Uh, to work on the same pull request, you either have to fork that pull request and uh, deal with even more Git of you know, pulling remotes from each other, uh, or, uh, proactively set up permissions, uh, like kind of try to anticipate who has access to uh, to a pull request or, uh, before they can really get started. And uh, GitHub, there's two options uh, for hosting it. There's, you know, use github.com uh, or, or uh, GitHub Enterprise. Uh, you cannot run a public instance of GitHub Enterprise. Uh, that's private only, so it's not an option for us. Uh, and uh, GitHub, um, github.com, of course, that would uh, definitely take a lot away from Drupal.org. Uh, so yeah, what, what do we mean is home of the project? It's, uh, we're thinking, Definitely for now, projects and issues stay on Drupal.org. Um, Drupal.org's issue queues, you know, that's where the contribution credit happens. We have the uh, integration with uh, labeling what version uh, issue is for, um, all of the categorization bug feature task. Um, in other systems, that's all labels, and people come up with contraptions for what the labels mean, uh, but they're uh, it's yeah, it's still kind of hacked together. Uh, we want something self-hosted. Uh, you know, if we want uh, if there's downtime, we want to be responsible for it. Uh, you know, if uh, if someone loses a copy of the database, we don't want. Maybe we do that. Hope, hopefully, we won't do that. But uh, we don't want to be at the mercy of other service providers for that. Uh, and we want single sign-on uh, with Drupal.org. Uh, if you're logged into Drupal.org, you are also logged into uh, whatever tool we're using. So, two front runners uh, we've uh, found uh, are uh, Bitbucket and GitLab. Uh, Bitbucket is kind of a surprise to us, you know, Atlassian products, they, uh, they're pretty boring. Uh, uh, they're a stable Atlassian's been around for a, a while. They're designed to run in, independently, you know, it's Jira Cloud, Jira Server, uh, Bit, Bitbucket Cloud or Server, uh, they all, uh, they're pretty stable, they work, they have good APIs. Um, uh, you know, but no one really, yeah, no one gets excited about Jira or Bitbucket. Uh, uh, so, yeah, it wasn't initially on our radar, but, um, uh, it's, uh, it would work. Uh, and GitLab, uh, so GitLab, it's uh, kind of the fastest moving uh, tool in this space right now. Uh, they're doing the whole startup thing, they're moving fast, uh, they have venture capital funding, they're putting pressure on GitHub to uh, do more stuff for open source projects. Uh, and GitLab itself is an open source project, which, which is great. Uh, 
we'd probably end up on the Enterprise Edition, which has some non-open source components. Uh, but uh, GitLab, you know, it's closer to the kind of ideal of we're an open source project, we support other open source projects. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a monolithic system. If you're running GitLab, they expect you to use their CI system, their, uh, uh, their issue system, their uh, project pages. Um, you know, really what we want to do is keep most things on Drupal.org, but add in the merge and pull, uh, pull requests. Uh, so, we had uh, pretty much decided on Bitbucket uh, because, um, you know, this work, uh, working with GitLab at the time wasn't really going any, anywhere. We posted uh, a series of four blog posts. Uh, you should go read them uh, to, uh, in addition to what I said, because there's more words that were said that. Uh, I'm probably forgetting, uh, but the uh, CEO of GitLab showed up in the comment thread like, whoa, 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 what, what's going on? Uh, and so they're uh, actually working with us. Uh, now, shared Slack channels are great. I think that's honestly um, one of the things that made a difference because uh, we hadn't had an open line of communication to their engineers. But now, uh, they have their engineers uh, trying to uh, solve the issues we've raised. There's stuff like um, the, um, if you fork a repository on GitLab, it makes a full copy of the repository. It, you know, that doubles the space, you know, two forks triples the space. Uh, and that makes sense for them as a startup. It's uh, probably cheaper to uh, throw disk at a problem than uh, engineering time. But with Drupal, we already have a big Git repository for Drupal core, and we have momentum around people working on it. That disk space would add up pretty quickly. So, uh, yeah, identifying issues like that, and um, you know, we're seeing how quickly they can solve them. And we're hoping to. Uh, um, have some sort of decision by around uh, DrupalCon Nashville because uh, they uh, um, yeah, we want to give them a bit more time to work out the uh, issues we've identified and there's a lot of uh, figuring out how systems will fit together like, you know, do we have Usernames that don't fit into the regular expression that they allow for usernames. Uh, there's <coughs> probably about 50 of them. So, like all these small things, like uh, seeing how things fit together, big, a big pro uh, problem will be figuring out the uh, permissions, like who can fork what. Uh, well, everyone can fork everything, but like who can push to what, getting the permissions set correctly. So we can have that collaborative development environment that we expect in the Drupal.org issue queues. Is this, is this for next year, 2020, or? Um, the, if things go well, could uh, have bits of this later this year. Uh, honestly, probably, uh, you know, we're a small team, uh, we're four people, uh, so I w wouldn't promise anything this year. Uh, the first uh, first pass will be replacing the Git servers themselves and leaving everything else as is, not exposing that GitLab exists or Bitbucket exists, uh, just having it as a place that, the uh, you know, handles Git pushes and uh, serving Git itself, authentication against Drupal.org. Uh, and 
yeah, the work we're, we're doing right now is uh, last, last week there were a couple uh, outages of the Git servers. That was to uh, get those moved in uh, from uh, dedicated hardware to a, a VMs and also get a bunch of upgrades done. They were still they're still running PHP 5.4. So now everything on our infrastructure is on a single version of PHP and we're kind of at a better spot to uh, actually test these things. <laughs> and yeah, once the initial uh, rollout uh, is done, hopefully, you know, it's the sort of thing you don't notice has changed, um, then we'll start uh, ex exposing parts of it. Uh, the uh, so you get dot drupal dot code dot org that website that sometimes you see uh, that's a good thing to replace right away because uh, it's just viewing the code and browsing it. Uh, yeah, we'll probably get a web version of get blame back. So pretty easy. Well, straightforward uh, adding of features, and then if things are still going well, then we'll look at adding merge requests or pull requests. I forget which what they each tool calls them. Bitbucket's merge requests, I think. Pull. Pull. Okay. Um, is it thirty-five or yeah. twenty-five? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, the uh, yeah ways to help uh, and keep updated. Um, we have a blog. There's monthly posts uh, about stuff like this. Uh, see, you can see what we've been working on. Uh, there's also uh, change notices you can subscribe to. They're uh, somewhere next to the blog. Uh, those are emails every two weeks of like more technical, this is what we're deploying this week. Uh, if you're running something like, uh, you know, something that's getting data from our API, they, you can expect changes in the next uh, couple of weeks uh, on a specific piece of the API, for example. Uh, Twitter handles, of course, uh, Drupal Infra, that's big outage announcements like the Git outage last week. Uh, Drupal org commit, that's the commit logs for Drupal.org itself. So, you know, the, you know, one or two or five times a day we deploy something, uh, the commit messages are there. Um, uh, I work for the Drupal Association, become a member, that, that's how, that's how we deliver Drupal.org uh, partnership programs. Uh, and yeah, there's stuff you want to work on. Uh, uh, for Drupal.org, we have dev sites that can be spun up in about half an hour. Uh, and yeah, thanks. Thank and yeah, any questions, find me anytime. <laughs> what was the alternative you mentioned to GitHub? What was it called again? Uh, Git GitLab and Bitbucket. Bitbucket. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yep.